everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're painting with coffee. So this is gonna be a really easy material for you to find in your house. And all you're going to need is a very thin paintbrush. So one that's got a nice point to it. You're going to need some sort of containers to put your different shades of coffee in. And you're going to need some paper. Um, the coffee I'm using is Nescafe, it's granulated coffee, this is the kind of coffee that you need, but it doesn't have to be Nescafe, it can be any brand that you can have, uh, you can find. So, let's get started. Um, to make the different shades of coffee, you need to put different amounts of coffee and different amounts of water into your pots. I've got five different shades, but um, more than, uh, probably six would be fine and no less than uh, three. So I've gone for five. So my darkest color is lots and lots of coffee and not very much water. Then less coffee, more water, less coffee, more water, less coffee, more water, until we've hardly got any coffee and lots of water. And it's going to make the lightest shade of our coffee. And the last thing you're going to need is a teaspoon that you'll put in the um, water, so it's, it's a little bit wet. You dip it into the coffee jar and just tap off the excess granules. And then you're gonna get this really nice kind of sticky black um, color, which we're gonna use a little for a little bit later. So you could also need a teaspoon as well. So actually I've got six different shades of coffee now, darkest through to lightest. So let's have a look at what those look like. So let's start, let's put a little bit of water on my brush. Let's start with the darkest one. This is the one on my teaspoon and it's very sticky this and we want it sticky because we're going to be almost drawing with it later and that makes almost a black colour. Okay, then before I stick my paintbrush in the next shade I must make sure that I use a tissue just to take off the excess coffee. Then I'm going to pop it into my darkest shade. Now coffee is heavier than water so it does tend to sink. So I'm gonna use my paintbrush to scrape off the coffee off the bottom. And let's look at this shade. This is a nice dark shade of coffee. And excess off, let's go to the next one. So we're going a little bit lighter now. Now the next one. A little bit lighter. Getting lighter until we get to the lightest shade. Now in art, we call this value. Value means from light through to dark of the same color. So this is the same color of brown, but we've gone from light to dark. This, uh, this end of the value, the light end, we call a tint. Now, if we were using paint, we would be using white paint and mixing it to the brown to get a tint, to get the lightest shade. Um, as we go through the value to the darker end, we call this a shade. And if we were using paint, we would use black to get different shades of this brown colour. But this time we're not using black and white paint, we're using water and coffee. So the more water that you use and the less coffee that you use, the lighter the tint of this coffee brown you're going to make and the more coffee you use and the less water you use the darker the shade of the coffee brown is going to be the darkest being this one where we've got hardly any water at all and the most amount of coffee which is on the teaspoon and just to remind you we call this element in art value Okay, not the value of money, <laughs> that's a different meaning in maths, um, but in art, this light through to dark is called value, if it's the same colour, which it is, because we've got this kind of brown. 
So what I suggest you guys do before we start doing the painting, and this is the painting that we're going to do today, it's of hot air balloons and a hill, and hills are clouds and a little boy and a little cat waving to people in their hot air balloons. Before you start this painting, you will need to set up your different shades and tints of coffee. So you need to pause the video now and you need to go away and set that up for yourself. And you're going to need to experiment like I did to make sure that you do have a nice difference between all the different shades. You don't want them all to look the same and there's not enough variety. So you wanna make sure you get some nice different variations. You might need to add a bit more water or a bit more coffee until you get the variation and the differentiation that you want. So pause the video now and go and make those different shades. Okay, hopefully you've made those different shades. <laughs> so now you're going to follow along with me and we're going to paint this picture together. This uh, tutorial is probably for our older children, our upper primary, so years four, five, and six, but there's nothing to stop the lower primary children from having a go as well. Or you might want to do more simple pictures like I've done a few examples for you. I just did a cat. Um, I just did experimented with the different shades and drew a cat. You could just find a picture on the internet and copy it. You could do any animal. Um, I had some fun splatting with my paintbrush. So I just got some coffee on my paintbrush and then just flicked. I expect quite a lot of you would enjoy doing that. Flicked uh, different shades and tints of coffee, and then I did a coffee mug just for a bit of fun in the middle. Um, you could paint some flowers. So I experimented with the different shades for the different petals. Um, a ni another nice thing to do is to let it dry and then come back to it, and then use your darker shade to paint over the top, to paint on some nice details. So that's another thing you can do is kind of do a basic outline like I did here with the flower and then come back to it after, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then you can add on some different uh, designs and um, really make your picture more interesting and more detailed. So I could just add in bits here in the middle of my flower okay and maybe some more leaves and you could extend your picture and um, have fun doing that so maybe for the younger children something more simple like this would be better for them but that's nothing to stop them from having a go uh, with me on our coffee hot air balloons so we're also going to learn a little bit about perspective today so what does perspective mean? Perspective means how far away and how close something is to us. So the rule of thumb is, is that the closer something is to us, the darker it is. And the further away it gets, the lighter it is. And if we're doing something like hills and mountains or sand dunes, the closer they are, the shorter they are. And the further away they are, the taller they appear. And it's the same with objects as well. So the further away an object is, the shorter it is and the lighter it is. And the nearer something is, the larger it is and the darker it is. And it's the same with the clouds. So the clouds nearest to us are the dark ones and the ones further away are the lighter clouds, the smaller clouds in the distance. So we're going to do that as well as we paint with our coffee. So you're going to need a new sheet of paper and I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can watch how I do the hills. So let's just move our coffees out the way, bring the paper up like this. Okay, I'm going to use my darkest shade because we're doing the hills that are the closest to us. And I also want to make sure that they aren't too tall. Because remember, things that are close to us are shorter. So our hills closest are darker and shorter. And I'm going to use my paintbrush to fill in the hills like this. 
Make sure I really get the bottom. Okay, so those are our hills closest to us, and they're also the shortest ones. Okay, so where's my tissue? Make sure I use my tissue to get the excess coffee off before I start to use the next colour. So my next shade of coffee, I'm going to do the next hill layer behind these ones. Now this bit you need to watch quite carefully because I don't want this hill to mix in with this hill because this is still wet and this is wet and it's all just going to bleed and blend in together. So between these two hills in this space I'm going to do a taller second layer. Now I don't want this to touch this so I'm going to make sure that I leave a gap I'm going to paint the outline of the hill first and then I'm going to fill it in. So now I'm not going to have any bleeding. Bleeding is when this colour bleeds into this colour and vice versa. And then between these two hills and this gap, another hill. And again, I'm going to make sure that I don't let them touch. And I'm going to fill, fill those in like that tissue. Okay, then I'm going to go for my next shade of coffee. And in between these two hills here in this space, Little bit taller and again I do not want my hills touching each other so outline first and then colour in with your paintbrush fill it in and in, in this space here another hill outline it so I outline all this space layer, second to last shade in this space here, so we're getting even lighter now, and our, mount, our hills are getting taller, and in this space here. and final shade, the really light one, the one, these are going to be the hills that are really far away. I'm going to do one here and these are going to be the tallest ones. So we're really, really getting very, very far away. One over here. They kind of look a little bit like fish scales, I think. So you could probably do like a fish picture as well using this technique. Okay, right. Now, I'm not massively happy about the two shade differences here. I don't know about you, but they look the same to me, so that's not making me very happy. So I'm actually going to do another layer on these uh, hills closest to me, just to make them a bit darker, because I'm not feeling the love. There to be a really obvious difference between the colours, between the shades, sorry, I shouldn't say the colours, between the shades, because they're not different colours, they're the same colour, they're just a different shade of the same colour. Yeah, I'm much happy with that now. I feel like as that dries, there's going to be a bit more of an obvious difference. 
Okay, so those are the hills. We're done with the hills. And now we're going to start to do the clouds. So let's zoom out to see what that looks like from a distance. That looks good. Bring my paper down and zoom back in so that we can do the clouds and you guys can see nice and close up what I'm doing. So again, we're going to do some dark clouds first. These are the clouds that are closest to us. And then we'll do some lighter clouds for the clouds that are furthest away from us. So my darkest shade of coffee goes first. And I'm going to do um, three. So in um, art, three is the magic number. It always looks good in three. So one, two, three, and then a line underneath fill it in. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And then another cloud maybe here. One, two, three. And a line underneath. And then fill it in. Make sure it's nice and smooth because clouds are all smooth and fluffy. And maybe I'll do one up here because we'll have three clouds. One, two, three. Line underneath. Fill it in. Okay, now I'm going to skip. I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to skip to this one. So my number three shade. And I'm going to do a third cloud. Now, remember how we said as things get further away from us, they get smaller. So this cloud is going to be smaller than these dark clouds because not only is it um, further away and it's also going to be lighter as well. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I've also made sure that I've positioned my clouds at the back, so kind of on top, but they look like they're behind. And slightly to the side. One, two, th three. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to go straight to my last shade, the lightest shade. So again, I'm going to go even smaller and even lighter. So a little bit higher up, even smaller. One, two, three. These are teeny tiny clouds. And a little bit further up, a bit smaller. One, two, three with the line, fill them in. A little bit further up the page. One, two, three. And fill them in. So there we go. There we've got our clouds. So now we're going to do our hot air balloon. So just zoom out so you can see how the picture's coming together. Zoom back in so we can do our hot air balloons. So again, just like the clouds, the, the hot air balloons that are closest to us need to be darker and bigger. So I'm gonna start with my darkest shade of coffee again. And I'm going to do a nice big hot air balloon because this is the hot air balloon closest to us. So it's a nice big circle. couple of layers in there because I really want it to be nice and dark and then I'm going to go from here at the side one this side two and then in the middle three four and I'm going to bring those little lines down to almost meet each other and then I'm going to do a nice big square this is the basket at the bottom of the hot air balloon it doesn't matter if I've gone over this hill it's going to give the appearance that it's floating nice and close to us and above all the other hills. So just join up those lines. There's our first hot air balloon. Now we're going to do the next hot air balloon. So I'm going to skip a shade like I did with the clouds and go to my third middle shade. Now I want my next balloon, just like my next 
my did what I did with the clouds. I want this one to be slightly smaller and slightly further up the page, like we did with our clouds. So close, middle close, furthest away. Close, this is middle close. So a little bit smaller, a little bit higher. So line at the side, one, two, three, four. So again, I'm doing it a little bit smaller because we want that perspective, that idea that they're floating off into the background. So there's my next hot air balloon. And now my last one, I'm gonna skip another one and go to my lightest shade like I did with the clouds. And again, as I'm getting further away, so I was nice and big and dark, medium, medium darkness. Now I'm gonna go higher up on the page still. Smallest and lightest. So really small now. A little circle. One, two, three, four. And a small basket underneath. my hot air balloon furthest away. Now I've actually got a nice bit of space here so I'm going to do one that's in between these two but you don't have to do that. So I'm going to take the, the colour that I skipped which is this one and I'm going to do one that is a little bit bigger than this, a little bit smaller than this. use my tissue just to get rid of those mistakes I just made. So there we go, let's zoom out. So now we've got our hills dark through to light, close to far away, our clouds dark through to light, close further and further away, and our hot air balloons dark through to light, and bigger, slightly smaller, slightly smaller, and the smallest. So we've got some really nice perspective in our picture. Now, my top tip now is to go away and do something else, go and play, let this dry, come back to it when it's completely dry, because the next stage, you are going to need the picture to be bone dry. So here's one I made earlier. I've let it dry now, and now I'm going to paint on my details, which are my little people and cat uh, waving up at the people in the hot air balloon. So that's what our next step is. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to person on this hill so you guys can watch what I do and this is where we're going to use our spoon that's got that sticky tarry type stuff on it and we're going to use this to draw our person so get your paintbrush with some of that on it decide what hill you want your person to be sat on I want my person to be sat on this hill we're going to draw first of all their head, which is a little circle, then a triangle for their body, then their legs are going to come up like that, and then down, as if they've got their legs up, and they need a little foot, and they need a bottom, so you need to put like a semicircle their bum is. Then they're going to have an arm 
up like this with a little hand waving. One, two, three, four, five. And their other arm's gonna be behind them and their hand as if they're leaning back. And I'm gonna give this guy a little nose so it looks like he is looking up. If you want to add a cat, you can. A cat's really easy, it's just a, a small circle. It's a tiny circle. Then a bigger circle. Some little ears. And a tail. And then we want our person to be waving at someone in the hot air balloon. So he's kind of looking off into the distance at this balloon, so I'm going to put my person waving back in here. So that's nice and easy. I just do a small circle by dabbing my brush like this, dab, 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 dab. Then a little body, which is just a little triangle. You're gonna to have to have very good paintbrush control. And then a little arm and a little hand waving back at him and you can add lots and lots of people in your balloons if you want to you don't just have to have one but I'm sticking with one here so there I've got my my little boy and his cat waving up at this man here in his hot air balloon and um, you can have a go at all sorts so I for this one I did a girl with a ponytail and then I did lots of people in the balloons waving at her and I didn't bother with a cat and for this one I did a boy and his cat and three people waving back at him so you can um, do as many different pictures as you like with lots of different ideas so I hope you enjoy that and have some fun making that with your different shades of copy and I look forward to seeing your pictures on Class Dojo have a great day bye